Good evening. Mm. Tonight, I'll be sharing with us on the topic, where the theme for the month. All of us, we all know it. Can we cross together? Show me your glory. That's what we're going to be centering our, our discussion tonight on. I don't want to say preaching because I'll say discussion. And I'll be talking on a topic that says hungry for more. Yes. Can we say it together? Hallelujah. Hungry for more. Uh, um, my central truth, what I'll be focusing on at the end of everything today is taken from the book of John 17, verse 3. John 17, verse 3 says, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only through God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. And we'll be doing a very long reading from that particular place where we, we took our theme for the month from. That is Exodus chapter 33, verse 12 to 23. So you will read along with me as we do that. And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou seest unto me, bring all these people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. 14. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will, I will give thee rest. 15. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry us not us hence. For wherein shall it be known where here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, and I, thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. 17. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also, that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. 18. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. 19. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. I will be gracious unto whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy on, on whom I will show mercy. 20. And he said, Thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. 21. And the Lord said, Behold, this is a, a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and, it's, and it shall come to pass, while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in the cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand, while I pass by. The last one. And I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. Amen. Amen. After reading through these things, I came up with five things that I, would, I want to share with you before I go into the topic, really. And about, number one thing is that your request to God is determined by the level of your understanding of Him. And I, I got a scripture to back that up in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 9. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? He said, let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. So your request of God is determined by the level of your understanding of him. Number two, you cannot genuinely ask God what your mind failed to comprehend. It's not possible. So what you have not conceived in your heart... Or what you don't, you can't, what your mind has not even conceived, or you don't, you have not pictured it in your mind, you cannot genuinely ask God about it. And that also is taken from James chapter 4, verse 3. He said, When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Number three, he said, Show me your prayer request. That's my, me coming now after reading through Moses' account, that particular place where we read. He said, I said, show me your prayer request in a desperate situation 
I will show you your level of your relationship with God. John chapter 6, verse 26. That's where I founded it from. John 6, 26. And I will read it for us here. It says, Jesus answered, Verily, truly, I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves. <laughs> and how do you feel? So that's the only reason why they were asking for God. So most of the times, our prayer requests at times, maybe because of what we hear and some other things, we are not genuinely asking God for some things that are really important. Number four, in, some, in your level of work with God, you don't ask for tangible things. You focus on eternal things. Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. He says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and the participation of his suffering, becoming like him in his death. That's what Paul prayed about in the book of Philippians. The last thing I came to understand about that particular place we read is that when you have the opportunity of asking God for something, don't ask for what has expiring date. Ask for things that will outlast your generation. First Chronicles chapter 1, verse 10. It says, give me wisdom and knowledge that I may lead these people. For who is able to govern this great people of yours? So I have come, if you look at the whole thing, the five things I've mentioned, it's just about your mind disposition at the time of prayer. Or at the time when you have the opportunity of asking God. The, uh, uh, our, mom, our mother that then lost in, in, the, in the prayer was telling us that God is saying, eat her too. You have not even asked. Yet, that means that we need to have a mind that when we are asking God for one thing, we know for sure he's going to hear us. But that's not the focus for tonight. And I want us to come back to Moses. I was privileged to be in my, my Augusta's house on, on Monday during Thanksgiving. And three of us were busy talking about this particular chapter of the scripture. Show me your glory. And we, I, I kept asking questions. Uh, Dickie was busy asking those things. We were just rooming, I mean, rooming, kind of discussing scriptures, basically. And this particular discussion came up. And we asked, show me your glory. It doesn't just, it has some understanding, I mean, some background stories before it comes to that time that Moses asked, show me your glory. So if you just speak that line and would think it ends there, we are missing a lot, a great thing. And I ask, before that time, has, has anybody ever asked God for glory before? Show me your glory. Before Moses. That is, before Moses asked for God's glory, as anybody, maybe any prophet whatsoever, maybe asked God for glory before. That was the first time a man would ask for glory of God. A man. And before I now ask, why that time? Before this time, Moses had, ha had had several encounters with God. Several encounters. Because I was trying to, I, I started from the book of Exodus chapter 1 to this chapter, chapter 33 to actually understand maybe Moses had never had kind of a strange encounter with God. So this is an opportunity for him to ask again for an encounter. But I understood. In fact, I had to kind of group it in, in, some, in, some, in some categories to, of, of different encounters that Moses had with God. The first one of it is the first time, the burning bush experience. I call it the burning bush experience. That was taken from the book of Exodus chapter 3, verse 2. His Bible says, you know, imagine, out of curiosity, he saw a bush running. And ah, who is that? And he heard a voice. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. He had, and God was speaking with him, this, yet he was busy asking God, ah, are you sure they will listen to me? God said, okay, are you sure? put your hands behind your, your hand. And he, and he brought it out. Oh, put it back again. And he said, well, how would they obey me? What do you have in your hand? He said, Rod, put it down. He put it down, became a snake. God was so kind, so patient with Moses that he made him to go through those 
series of experiences, if there's any English like that. Yeah, I think there is. Yeah, he went through that. And that was the first experience. The second one was the Egypt experience. I call it to the Red Sea. That was Exodus chapter 6, from Exodus chapter 6, then to chapter 7, chapter 8, to 14. Because from Egypt to the Red Sea. About 10 different miraculous signs. God used the hand of Moses. To, I mean, God did in the land of Egypt through Moses. That means at in first hand experience. Not that maybe uh, a medium man, there's a medium man between God and Moses. First hand experience that God will give him instruction, go and tell him this. I will hide in his heart. This is what I'm going to do. Very specific, detailed. And even God was telling Moses to listen that I will hide in the heart of Pharaoh. He will not hear you. So that Moses had a pre information, kind of, he knew what is going to happen. Even before they happen to that level. Yet, that wasn't, what, that wasn't enough. Then there's a post Red Sea experience. Then, between water of Mara and Helim in Exodus chapter 15, 22 to 27, there again, God told him, Go and strike the rock. And he struck the rock, and the water came. He drank water. And also, supply of manna. God told him, I'm going to supply manna. He even gave him instruction about Sabbath, that uh, uh, before Sabbath, there will be enough for you, that you can gather enough and keep. Very specific. He delivered that message to the people, for the people of God. That wasn't enough. Another, another experience, again, was the water out of the rock. That's Exodus 17, 1 to 7. Then there's a Mount Sinai experience in Exodus chapter 19. And there's another experience too, before this time, where the commandment and the law was released. It was a very long experience. In fact, I was trying to look at that. It started from chapter 20 to 32, where God was telling him about even offering, anointing oil. Virtually everything, God was given in Moses' instruction about how it's going to be done. Very detailed experience. And it was, the, the account was so much that Moses was getting all those things. Even to the extent that before he came back from the mountain, people said, ah, we don't think this Moses is coming back. He's been there for God knows when. Let's gather some earrings and some jewels together. And the Bible says they make calf and start worshipping it. Because they said, Moses, they don't believe Moses is coming again. So let's just devise a means of worshipping this God. As if that wasn't enough for Moses. So after God told him, he said, go back. It seems your people are misbehaving down. And he came back. He came down and he saw them. He, was, he wasn't happy, even though he had very precious commandment in his hand. So uh, yet, now, come to chapter 33. Even in some, I think about 12 or so, it was reported that God spoke to Moses face to face as a man speak to his friend. It was reported that. And now, come to this place. It's a kind of a prayer request. That's why I said, your, your understanding of God during the hours of, of desperation will determine the kind of prayer or your prayer request. Will determine that. Very, very important. Yet, he came down. Had this experience in the tent. And he was busy asking God. See, very, I, was, I actually group it to three prayer requests that he asked. Three. Number one, he said, teach me your ways. Then I, I now ask myself, a man that has been following God for God knows when, and now he's not asking for the ways of God. If Moses does not know the way of God, who else will know? <laughs> eh? So yet, it tells me that he's not just satisfied with what the experience he had last last time. He's hungry for more. He, he, he wants more. He wants to know more of this particular God. I, 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 I don't want to. I, I try to struggle with it when I was doing these studies. I struggle. Because God specifically told Moses how the law should be, I mean, how the offering should be made. How the temple, that, what other ways do you want? Yet, you have this encounter with this God and you are still asking, show me your way. 
that wasn't enough. Even God guaranteed, don't worry, my presence will go with you. God guaranteed Moses that don't, God's presence has been with him. They passed through the Red Sea. All those miracles that were done in the, Egypt, uh, I mean, the land of Egypt, who, who did those miracles? Was it, it was God. And yet, you are still saying, uh-huh, if your presence, number two, he said, if your presence, your, let your presence go with us. That's in verse 15 and 16. He said, let your presence go with us. The, what about the, the ones? Even scripture reported that a pillar of fire by night and a, a pillar of cloud by day. See, I've never seen such kind of experience before. There's no electricity. Yet, they were having fire going. And they were majestically walking. The presence of God was going with them. It was life. They saw it live. It wasn't maybe a storybook. They witnessed God life. First hand. Thank you, sir. And yet, Moses is still saying, let your presence go with me. I, I, I struggle. By the way, I, I didn't put it here. It was later when I was in the office today. Now, it just occurred to me. I would say the Holy Spirit brought it to my mind. Do you know that the book of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Number, Deuteronomy was written by Moses? Have you seen Genesis before? Have you read Genesis before? How detailed that chapter was. You can't write those things without a counter, without real life encounter with God. It's not possible. It's not possible. So I, my, in my thought, I think maybe God took him to Genesis, I mean, to Ge- and start revealing those things to him. He had a much experience with God. Because if you look at those accounts, the number of years and the names, uh, it takes somebody that, <laughs> that God is really, 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 really backing up before you can write two things down. And yet, this same man is asking for God's presence. To crown it off, what is different? What is, I can understand the presence of God. I can understand the way of God. Then, show me your glory. I, the way of God, I'm used to it, right? Because, yeah, sure, because I know God has been doing some miraculous things, so I can understand. I can say, show me your ways, yeah, because I, I know God from even before, before Egypt. Then I can understand the presence of God because I've seen his presence by day, by night. His presence is always with us. I can understand. But glory, where is it coming from? Where? That's the question I was asking myself. I said, show me your glory. I, I know Moses must have had very peculiar experience. Very special experience. Maybe he has seen God. He has seen different ways that God does his things. And everything, and everything, he just felt that. Uh, if I'm to ask personally, or if I'm to make such kind of request, I, won't, I don't know where the word glory comes from anyways. Maybe it has been in the dictionary before that time. I don't know. Because I didn't read it like that. Eh? But he came out with special word. Special request. Ah, see, when, when he, and besides, he, he ensured that he maximized the presence of God that he was that time. Ah, I can imagine. He asked for this God answer. He asked for this God answer. He not even asked for the impossible. Because the Bible says... Go, no man has ever seen God and live. Hallelujah. That's what scripture says. Hallelujah. And yet, this same man was asking for the impossible. Hallelujah. The glory of God. That was humanly impossible. But God being God, praise God. Hallelujah. God being God. He told, well, <laughs> I don't want to say no to this request because if I say no, it will be recorded and people will be reading about it that God said no to, <laughs> to a prayer request. Because it's a prayer, right? It's a prayer. And as, as, as we read through, during our prayer meeting today, he said, whatsoever thing you ask, whatsoever, 
If God had not answered Moses that time, that scripture would have been, you know, remember now, Moses asked, and God didn't answer. <laughs> right? That was what we would say. But thank God for God. Hallelujah. Thank God for God. Hallelujah. Scripture says, no word of his will go void without accomplishing, without fulfilling the purpose. So God knows all that. He knew all that even before the world was formed. And he had to devise a means of answering Moses. Moses, if I show you myself, you will not leave. What I will do is that I will cover you with my hand. Ah! Oh! <laughs> and not only that, he said, I will hide you by the cliff of the rock. Then I will cover you with my hand and I will pass by so that you can see my back. Even if I can see God's back, that's enough. <laughs> Hallelujah. This God is awesome. Excuse me. So, that made me to start asking, hungry for more of God. I don't know how much of God we think we know that will fit into this man's prof- I mean, profile, Moses' profile. I don't know how many years we'll be in faith that will fit into this kind of man's profile. Has God ever revealed something to you that will pass many generations? Because I can't remember, I, I, I can't count how many generations after Moses. And yet we are still reading about his account. That means that encounter is not just any encounter. It's not just any. So I don't know the level you have in faith that you think, I'm okay the way I am. After all, I can read from Genesis to Revelation. I tell you, Moses knows God's way. Before he asked for his ways. Moses has been with God. I can't count the number of years because, but trust me, if I kind of do some Bible diggings, we know the number of years before this time that he will ask for his ways. Yet, he's still asking for it. He's asking for God's presence, even though the, the presence is virtually everywhere with him. Yet, he's still asking for God's presence. Even though he's still in God's presence. He was in God's presence. Why he was asking for God's presence to go with them? Yet, he's still asking. He was hungry for more of it. David prayed a prayer in Psalm 27, verse 4. Media, can you report with that? That's a sample of people that yearn for more. He says, one thing have I desire of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. Beholding, that's what glory, the, the same glory that Moses is requested for. Paul had similar thing in Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. He says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable unto his death. Praise God. The challenge to us, however, is number one, is that we should no longer be children, but grow into Christ. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14 and 15. He says that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and be carried about with every winds of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. 15. He says, but speaking the truth in law may grow, grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. He said, and number two, Peter was saying that uh, grow in grace and in the God's knowledge. In God's knowledge. Second Peter chapter two, I mean second Peter chapter three, verse 18. He said, but grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be glory now and forever. So Paul again came back in Hebrews chapter six, verse one. He said, let us go up to maturity. He said, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works 
and of faith towards God. So the challenge is it's, it's great that yet we have been in the faith. Many of us have been in the faith for, 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 for ages, for some times. But it's another time for us to, to step up, uh, to, 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 to want more of God. Let us not stop living uh, like on, on those minor things that are not eternal, that are not heavenly. Let us, if, if, if we offend ourselves, there's an important thing that we, we call ourselves and just say to it and let it be. But we need to grow and we need to know more of him. I'll be closing by reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 31. Then I will just say one simple song and I will close. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or whither shall we be clothed? He said, for, what, for after all these things do Gentiles seek, for our Heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. Verse 32, 33. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. 34. He says, take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought. For the things of itself, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So the challenge is that Moses in his time wasn't satisfied with the level he was. He, he grew. He was growing more and more to maturity. And something that I failed to put up, I mean to put in here, is that the higher you go, there's everything. We discussed that on Monday. That that God did not allow Moses to get to Port Canaan land, maybe it's going to be a topic for another time. And I, I believe tonight, God will empower us, God will strengthen us for more of him. There's a, song, a, a hymn, particular hymn, that was written maybe in 1947 by, I think it was published by uh, Leroy Abner. He said, it, it, there's a very old song, very, very old hymn. I don't know many of us may know it. He said, why traveling through this world of sorrow? I'm on my way to the glory land. I'm not turned back for some tomorrow. My trials here, I'll understand. I want to know more. I want to know more about my Jesus. Yes, I do. I want to know more. Yes, I want to know more about my Lord, my blessed Lord. I want to know more. I want to know more about the mansion, heavenly mansion. I'm going to receive. I'm going to receive as my reward, my rich reward. I want to know more. I want to know more about the homeland, wonderful homeland. I, and I mean to go there. I mean to go there. Someday, somehow, someday, somehow. And after I reach, after I reach the heavenly city, the heavenly city, I mean to know more. Yes, I'm going to know more that I know now. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.